All right, so one of the things that we actually kind of touched upon here was that as you pull a material in one direction, it will tend to, um, when you're just pulling attention, will contract laterally. So we saw that actually with the previous example of our uniaxial um, deformation of a rubber elastic um, system. Um, so in general, if I'm if I have my system one, two, three, I have my system like this. If I'm pulling in the three direction, I'm pulling it um, basically in tension. It's going to contract laterally. So for example, I can describe the Poisson's ratio as minus my lateral strain over my axial strain. So basically, I could look at this, and then I could also describe my Poisson's ratio in terms of this as well, because those are the lateral contractions. So for an isotropic material, this should be equal. Anisotropic materials, not uh, quite. Why is there this negative sign here? Um, typically, for most materials, as you see here, for metals, ceramics, polymers, those are the big ones we're going to kind of cover a lot. Um, the, this material is going to contract here. So actually, it's going to extend here, excuse me. The contraction, oops, what's this? 2, 2, and 3, 3, excuse me. Um, so this is my axial extension. My, that strain is positive. This strain here, this contraction is negative, so my Poisson's ratio will be there. So you can see that the that ratio is larger for polymers basically due to that elastic um, elasticity, again, bonding, then ceramics, and then uh, metals too. So it's larger than those values. Um, you see some unique um, Poisson ratios. So, so for regular honeycomb structure, really one, cork is zero. And then if you have isotropic solids, um, they can range essentially anywhere from 0 0.5 to negative. Negative values are quite strange because that means when, when you pull a material, it would actually expand in these other directions. Um, those are usually kind of these meta materials or they're kind of these kind of basically like kind of origami type structures. So those are kind of the most common. So you can see what I was trying to draw right here. So this is the Poisson's ratio. This is going to become very important as we develop our most important equation that we've really kind of come across yet, which is how do we write out our complex stress rates and actually des describe complex strain and complex stresses um, respectively. So Poisson's ratio will be important in that instead. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.